The first ever orbital flight of SpaceX's giant Starship vehicle is less than a week away. SpaceX said the launch schedule hinges on regulatory approval by the FAA, which licenses commercial launch and re-entry operations for U.S. companies. The 120-meter rocket will become the largest and most powerful launch vehicle ever to fly when it lifts off from Starbase, surpassing the size and engine thrust of NASA's Saturn V moon rocket and the Soviet Union's N-1 launcher. On the launch day, two hours before liftoff, SpaceX flight director will conduct a go-no-go pull and give commands for propellant loading. It takes nearly an hour and a half to fully load both the ship and the booster. The Raptor engine chill-down process is set to happen at the T-16 minutes and 40 seconds mark. During this phase, a portion of the propellant is passed through the 33 engines of the booster to condition them to the right temperature before ignition. The vehicle will go into internal power when it gets closer to T-0, and the onboard computer will take over the countdown sequence. The Raptor startup sequence begins at T-8 second mark, followed by engine ignition. Once all 33 engines reach the required thrust level, the launch mount clamps will release, sending the world's most powerful rocket into space. After clearing the nearly 146-meter tall launch tower, Super Heavy and Starship will steer on a trajectory east from Starbase over the Gulf of Mexico. The rocket will surpass the speed of sound and maximum aerodynamic pressure in less than a minute. Starship will endure the harshest structural loads of its ascent into space during Max-Q. The booster engines will cut off 2 minutes and 49 seconds into the flight, letting the first stage separate from the Starship upper stage. Then the Raptor engines on the ship will ignite, firing for the first time in space to begin a planned six and a half minute burn to accelerate to a speed close to orbital velocity. After separating from Starship, Super Heavy Booster will reignite some of its 33 engines to cancel out its downrange velocity for a boost back burn. Falling toward the Gulf of Mexico, the rocket will light a few of its engines again just before reaching the sea to slow for a controlled splashdown. The Starship vehicle will coast around the world, flying over the Straits of Florida, the Atlantic Ocean, Africa, the Indian Ocean, and the Pacific, before performing a belly flop splashdown approximately 100 kilometers off the northwest coast of Kauai. According to Elon Musk, Starship has about a 50% chance of successfully completing all the mission objectives on its first attempt. SpaceX carried out five high-altitude suborbital Starship test flights in 2020 and 2021. Those flight tests helped validate the vehicle's design, proving Starship can fly through the subsonic phase of entry before relighting its engines and flipping itself to a vertical configuration for landing. The purpose of Starship's integrated orbital flight test is to gather data on the performance of the rocket, its engines, computers, and ground systems. These data will enable engineers to refine Starship designs for further tests and eventually operational missions to place satellites in orbit and carry cargo into deep space. A full mission success would gain data on the accuracy of the booster's landing ahead of future returns to the launch site to be caught by the launch tower arms. At the same time, the survival of Ship 24 until splashdown would validate its thermal protection system tiles. However, given the challenges of this maiden flight, anything past a smooth ascent, as opposed to damaging the launch site via an early failure during the countdown or launch, would be a significant achievement for SpaceX. The Federal Aviation Administration website announces that Starship's anticipated launch date is April 17, with backup dates from 18th to 22nd. However, the schedule will depend on several factors, such as the completion of final checkouts on the rocket, weather conditions, and most notably, the approval of a commercial launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. The license can be expected at any time on or before April 17. SpaceX could literally launch Starship within minutes of receiving the launch license. Authorities have already issued navigation warning areas stretching into the Gulf of Mexico, including a marine hazard zone probably for the Super Heavy impact. There is also a 2300 nautical mile long debris alert zone in the Pacific. Temporary flight restrictions have been issued for Mexican and U.S. airspace to alert aviators of the launch of Starship. Road closures on April 17th, 18th, and 19th for flight operations are also posted on the Cameron County website. SpaceX had plans to conduct a full stack wet dress rehearsal this past week, but the company later canceled the plan. With the high likelihood of scrub launch attempts on the first try, it just makes so much more sense for SpaceX to go for launch and treat those aborted attempts as wet dress rehearsals. On April 11, Starship 24 was removed from Booster 7 to arm the flight termination system. The flight termination system is a safety mechanism used in rockets to ensure public safety if the launch vehicle goes out of control or off course during its flight. 
The flight termination system is designed to destroy the rocket in flight by triggering an explosion in case it threatens populated areas, critical infrastructure, or national security. It is usually controlled by a remote ground station or an onboard computer that monitors the rocket's trajectory and status during the flight. Once the flight termination system is armed, Ship 24 will be stacked atop Booster 7 for launch. A second Starship orbital launch within a few months is feasible if the launch site handles the first flight. The next prototypes in line are Starship 25 and Super Heavy Booster 9. Booster 9 resides inside the Mega Bay with its engines undergoing installation, and Ship 25 is being tested at SpaceX's recently acquired Massey's facility. Elon Musk recently revealed SpaceX's plans to build next-generation Starship vehicles. The next generation of ships will be 60 meters tall, 10 meters longer than the current prototypes. Those ships will feature six vacuum-optimized Raptor engines, which, according to Musk, is inevitable. When the Starship's design was first unveiled in 2017, the ship measured 48 meters tall, and the whole vehicle measured 106 meters. The ship was supposed to feature four vacuum-optimized and two sea-level engines. The Starship's design has significantly changed since 2017. Today, the ship measures 50 meters, and the entire vehicle measures nearly 120 meters. As you know, the ship currently features three vacuum-optimized and three sea-level Raptors. Adding three more vacuum engines will double the Starship's current vacuum thrust, and with a 10-meter addition in length, the ship can carry enough fuel for interplanetary missions. According to Musk, the orbital launch mount will also receive some upgrades in the near future. High-strength stainless steel armor will be added to protect the launch mount from the 33-booster engine exhaust during liftoff. Moreover, since steel will be eroded fast by the booster plume, the launch mount will need a water-cooled steel jacket to achieve full reusability. SpaceX is currently working to install a water deluge system for the launch mount to prevent rocket exhaust from damaging the launch platform and its surroundings. The system will spray thousands of liters of water directly below the rocket's engines to protect the launch pad hardware from the extreme acoustic and thermal environment during liftoff. Although the deluge system will not be operational before the orbital test flight, future missions from Starbase will have an active water deluge system. SpaceX is also planning to install a flame diverter in addition to the water deluge system. The primary purpose of the deflector is to divert the exhaust plume away from the launch vehicle to prevent damage to the launcher. Several parts for the Starship flame diverter have already arrived at Starbase, and the installation of the diverter may begin as soon as the orbital test flight is complete. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. The European Space Agency's JUICE spacecraft to Jupiter launched atop an Ariane 5 rocket from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana on April 14. The spacecraft separated from the Ariane 5 rocket 28 minutes after launch, and several minutes later the spacecraft deployed its solar panels. Over the course of the next 17 days, JUICE will deploy its antennas and other instruments, followed by three months of testing and preparing the instruments. Reaching Jupiter will take JUICE more than eight years, with a series of gravitational assists as it flies by Earth, the Moon and Venus, to give the spacecraft the push it will need to enter Jupiter's orbit in July 2031. Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, will make detailed observations of Jupiter and its three large ocean-bearing moons Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa, with various remote sensing, geophysical, and in-situ instruments. The European Space Agency selected the JUICE mission for development in 2012. The spacecraft, which weighs nearly 6,000 kilograms, is equipped with 10 science instruments developed by research teams across Europe, the United States, and Japan. JUICE's solar panels are the largest ever built for an interplanetary spacecraft, stretching nearly 27 meters tip to tip, with an area of 85 square meters. Their large size will allow JUICE to generate enough power for the spacecraft and its science instruments at Jupiter. During its 3.5 years of scientific investigations, the spacecraft will make 35 flybys to examine the wider Jovian system and characterize the gas giant's atmosphere, magnetic environment, ring system, and smaller satellites. This series of flybys will see JUICE buzzing Europa twice in July 2032 in an effort to find pockets of liquid water beneath its icy shell. The Italian Space Agency and NASA provide JUICE's radar that can penetrate the surfaces of icy moons as deep as 9 kilometers, showing us their internal structures for the first time. Europa's frozen surface also has puddles of melted water, which researchers believe can be cozy habitats for extraterrestrial life. JUICE will also hunt for previously detected plumes of water vapor from Europa. Such plumes, which may rise 200 kilometers high, are thought to originate from the moon's hidden ocean. During several flybys of Callisto, Jupiter's second-largest moon, 
JUICE will study the cratered and ancient surface of this moon, which may also possess a subsurface ocean. The final stage of the JUICE mission will involve orbiting Ganymede. Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, has a radius of 2,630 kilometers, slightly less than Mars, and is 4.5 billion years old, placing it at the same age as Jupiter. The spacecraft's instruments will create a higher-resolution map of Ganymede's icy surface and investigate its magnetic field and deep subsurface ocean. JUICE will enter orbit around Ganymede in late 2034 and remain there through the end of the mission, currently planned for September 2035. When JUICE runs low on fuel, ground controllers will guide the spacecraft on a collision course with Ganymede to ensure it doesn't contaminate any other moons in the Jupiter system, which could hinder future missions searching for life. Relativity Space has decided to retire its Terran-1 launch vehicle after its failed maiden mission. Terran-1 was launched on its debut test flight on March 22, and the rocket performed well initially, surviving Max-Q, the part of flight during which the structural loads are highest on a vehicle. But something went wrong shortly after the stage separation, and the rocket failed to reach orbit. On April 12, Relativity Space released the preliminary findings of its ongoing anomaly investigation. It appears that the main valves of the upper stage's Eon engine opened more slowly than expected during flight, and the oxygen pump didn't generate enough pressure, possibly due to a vapor bubble at the pump inlet. Despite those issues, the rocket reached a maximum altitude of 134 kilometers before re-entering Earth's atmosphere and landing harmlessly in the Atlantic Ocean. After that failed debut mission, Relativity has decided to set Terran-1 aside to work on the much larger and more powerful Terran-R rocket. Relativity announced a Terran-R in 2021, however, the design of that vehicle has changed in the nearly two years since that announcement. The rocket will no longer be completely reusable, but fitted with an expendable second stage. First stage reuse plans look similar to the first stage of a Falcon 9, with grid fins and multiple engine burns to control re-entry. The rockets will land on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean and be refurbished at Relativity's facilities at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The original Terran R design was 66 meters tall and could lift up to 20 metric tons into low Earth orbit, thanks to its 7 Eon R first stage engines. The new Terran R will stand 82 meters tall and feature 13 Eon R engines in its first stage and a single Eon R vacuum engine in its second stage. The Eon R engine, which employs liquid oxygen as an oxidizer and liquid methane as fuel, is designed to fly at least 20 times. Terran R's thrust at liftoff will be comparable to that of Blue Origin's New Glenn and United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur, two heavy lift launch vehicles preparing for their first missions. Instead of 3D printing, Relativity will now manufacture some parts of Terran R, like tank barrels, using aluminum alloy and traditional metal bending techniques. Terran 1 was about 85% 3D printed by mass, and Relativity had planned to get that number up to 95% for the Terran R, but that's no longer the case. Relativity Space will continue building its existing facilities at Cape Canaveral Space Force Base to support Terran R missions. The company had been aiming to launch Terran R for the first time in 2024, but it is now targeting 2026 for its debut liftoff. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.